thanks. Just uh, just finishing off your packing to travel down to London for the X Factor Tour rehearsals tomorrow. Yeah, I seen I seen your tweet saying you were nearly all packed and stuff. I suppose it's a busy time for you at the moment, isn't it, with the with the, the rehearsals and everything for the tour going on? So yeah, I mean it's I mean it's really really busy. Yeah, I mean I've got loads plans, you know, loads plans up in London uh, for the rehearsals and then obviously my own gigs in between and you know I've got a few t- TV interviews and t- TV shows to do next week as well. So a lot of radio as well to promote the tour um, all around the UK. So I'm really looking forward to it. Good, good. Right, I'm not going to beat about the bush. Right, the reason I've got you on, Chris, um, is I was listening to a local station uh, which you were interviewed on. Um, and I was listening to the interview that you'd done on there and it came across really different from what the, the perception of you is. Um, so I thought, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Chris on to, to come on and prove once and for all that, that all the stories and everything that were made up were were a, were a load of lies really. Um and to give you your chance to put your side across. Um first of all, what I'd like to start off with, if it's okay with you, is the journey before the X Factor, because obviously, you know, you'd been a singer, you'd done a few bits and pieces beforehand. When you first entered the competition of the X Factor, what were your expectations of going into the competition? My expectations um, was to obviously, obviously, let me dream of working for the, I was working for the council, I was working for the I live in LMH, you know, I'm still I'm still currently employed by them at the minute. Um, you know, and I, I was um, I was there for I was there for five years and you know, I just I really wanted to just sing, you know, I, I did bits and pieces when I was younger, you know, I did a cruise ship for like six weeks and then I did like cross channel ferry for six weeks. But like there was breaks in between, it wasn't consecutive, it was like, you know, I did like say I d I'd done it like I'd done a cross channel ferry when I was eighteen, done that for six weeks, took a break. And then I took a break for about four years um, and got a job in, like, you know, an insurance place in town. Um, uh, and then I worked there and then I wanted to sing again. And then so we did, like, six weeks on a cruise ship and then left there and then and then, and then went to the council. So it wasn't like it wasn't like a big singing career or anything like that, you know. Um, and then I was in, I would say, currently with, with LMH. And, you know, it took me five years to pluck up the courage to actually audition for it. Um, you know, because I really wanted to, you know, to, to live the dream and, you know, to just to be on the X Factor because I didn't want to wake, wake up and, like, you know, when I was 40, 50 and, you know, regret regret that I, I hadn't done it. So I'm so, you know, so glad that I did do it. Yeah, you know, I mean... It was a, it's been an amazing experience. I've had such, such a great such a great experience. Yeah, I, I mean, I can sympathise with what you're saying there because a lot of people, it takes somebody else to nominate them, doesn't it? You know, sometimes it takes people who've got the talent, it takes an auntie or an uncle or a friend or somebody to actually nominate them for a competition like that. So, was there ever a, 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 a part of of the competition where you were thinking, I don't really want to do it, but there was somebody else who was pushing you and pushing you and pushing you to do it? Or do you know what? What it was, I mean, when I got the when I got told no, I mean, I was devastated. I mean, I felt like someone had just uh, put their hands in, you know, in my chest and ripped my heart out. You know, I was absolutely devastated. When Daddy gave me the lifeline to, you know, uh, for the wild card, I was just, I was just absolutely thrilled. And then it was down to the public vote. You know, and the public, you know, chose to bring me in as their wild card. And you know, I'm so grateful to the public for for doing that. Um, you know, and along along the way, you know, it was getting harder and harder, and you know, there was, you know, things that were coming out in the press about Diva that wasn't true, and I liked me tea a certain way that wasn't true, and you know, it was just the, the, I think there were the, the, the certain, you know, people trying to sway the public vote, and you know, it wasn't fair, and they were, I was trying to portray me as something that I wasn't, and you know, I think at that point I was like, ah, oh, you know. I could have, I could have actually, have, you know, I could have actually have walked, you know. But I thought, no, I'm not going to do it. You know, I want to live my dream. This is all I've ever wanted to do. And if I walk, I'm going to let me not just myself down, but everyone and all the public that were voting me in. You know, you know, and I'm just so, you know, and I wanted, and I'm so glad, you know, to come third out of 250,000 people is such an achievement, and I'm just so, so grateful that I made it that far, and you know that that I was the public vote. You know, I was walking it for seven weeks. I mean, I mean. I had a look at the uh, the polls and you know I absolutely 
actually, I actually walked with Bollock for the seven weeks. It was only the last three weeks that, you know, that and I think it was with James and Ella being in the bottom two. Um, I think that started to sway the vote a little bit. And I think also what whatever you know the, the you know the orchestrated press that was that was involved as well. Yeah, I mean, getting on to these, you know, the, st- the stories and things that came out, um, I mean, did you expect any of that? Because obviously this, the, the series before that, we'd had all the, we'd had all the Talisa and, and Misha B. Ral, hadn't we? So, yeah, I mean, no, I didn't. I mean, the, the, the thing is, though, I didn't give any reason for, I didn't give any reason, you know, for them to say any, for, the, for anyone to say that I was a diva, you know. I mean, I, I spoke to Louis afterwards, he made the comment on Extra Factor, and he just said, he said, Chris, he said, I said, why me? So, your name just popped into my head and, you know, you're popular with the public and, you know, it'll get you in the papers. And I was like, oh, I said, it'll get, it'll get me in the papers for, for the wrong reasons. But, I mean, it's TV, isn't it? I mean, everyone, you know, there's a panto villain every year and unfortunately, you know, this year um, it was me. But I, as I say, I wore my heart on my sleeve and I, I didn't expect it to, you know, be the way it was. And, you know, I, and I just hope, you know, the general public, you know, un- understand, you know, that it is, a, you know, a TV show and someone has to be the villain. And unfortunately, I mean, I, I mean, I give no reason. I was so grateful to be there. I give no reason to, you know, to play up or be a diva. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just a shame, really. But, you know, I had a great time and I'm, you know, looking forward to the tour and to meet everyone that voted for me. I can't wait. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it's not, it's not only a case of bad publicity, but it's also unfair as well, isn't it? Because, you know, you've put your heart and soul into the competition to get to that to get to that point. You've gone through the audition process, the judges' house and everything. You get to there and that one comment, as we found out with yourself and Misha B, that one comment from one judge, even though it's a throw off comment from one of the judges, that that, that can that can devastate your career, can't it? You know, and Oh most um, definitely, you know, and it was hard. I mean for the for the, I mean he made that comment he made that comment at the beginning of the competition and throughout that competition I had to you know, for every press interview and, you know, every radio interview and every T V interview, I was defending myself all the way through and uh, I didn't see why I should have had to have done that. You know, it was yeah. it was quite difficult for me and it was quite difficult for my family as well, you know, um, at that at that time. You know, um, but I mean my family and friends know me and you know, that hopefully, you know, the public that voted know me, you know, and, and you know, got to know me throughout, you know, the DTs and, you know, throughout me interviews and stuff and they, they know the real me and you know that that you know that was just that's just just television. Yeah, unfortunately, but you know, that's that's the way things are. Um so as as I say, you moved on, you got you, you got through to the final. Um, and, and you came third. What's it been? What's it been like since? Has, has your life completely changed, or is it still sort of? I mean, obviously you've got the tour coming up, which is which yeah, is taking up I mean, a long lot, a lot of your time. But you know, do people recognise you more? And can you, you do the same things, or is it just you, you, your whole life's completely changed? Or my whole life at the minute is completely changed. Yeah, I mean. I, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know how much I'm spending taxis at the moment because I can't like, I can't even, I can't like even get on a bus. It's, it's, it's mad. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's great. I'm, I'm, I mean, as I say, I'm going out there, and you know, for the people that are doing meet, you know, I stop and chat and you know, get a photograph and you know, I, you know, speak to them and get to know them. You know, these are the people that you know that are voting for me, and hopefully, will you know, one day buy you know, my music and stuff. So I'm quite grateful to them. You know, that that they're asking me for a photograph and you know they're asking me for them, you know, to stop and talk to me, so it's quite nice, it's quite endearing. Yeah, I mean, obviously, as you said before, you went in into the competition. This is what you wanted all along, really, wasn't it? And it's just a shame that obviously people didn't get to know the truth about you in yeah, the competition. I mean, all, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, all I wanted to do was sing and to make people happy and just to do, you know, just to live my dream, you know, and, and not regret it. And you know, uh, that's that's what I, 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 I wanted to do. And I think I was a little bit naive because I, I, I don't really read the press, and you know, with the. Um, with, with regards to the, the previous X Factors, I mean, I've watched it for eight years, and obviously the ninth year this year, last year, I was, you know, I came third, and you know, I never really got involved with the with the press or read anything about it. I just watched the show, and um, so I was quite naive as to, you know, what 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 was going to be what would be said about you and what would be written about you and you know what could be made up about you and stuff like that. So I was a little bit naive. 
uh, on that point. I, I suppose, it, yeah, it, it could be put down as naivety, but I suppose also it could be put down as you, you put your, your trust in, in your mentor and your judges and the fellow judges, don't you? Because they've got they've got their own artists to look after or their own acts. So you think, well, would they really sabotage somebody else's acts to that to that extent to try and you know force force them out of the well, show? It's, it's, it's a competition. I mean, it's a competition. I mean, I, I, I was seen as a potential threat by all the judges. Um, obviously not Gary because he was my mentor, but I was a potential threat, and you could see that. I mean, obviously throughout the show, I mean, you know, I was I was getting forty, fifty percent of the, of, of the public vote, you know, right up until uh, week eight. Uh, for so for seven weeks, I, I was topping the boat. I was walking it. I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, me and my hands on my heart. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't think that I'd, I'd win it. Um, not because of me, James or Jermaine would be that good, but to be honest with you, I, I wouldn't have thought that a wild card would ever would, would ever win that would ever win the show because you know it's it's the judges that pick you. You know, the public picked me. Um, you know, as as their wild card. So I think in my hands on my heart. I mean, if I'm looking back at it now, I, I probably wouldn't have won it anyway. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a weird competition, isn't it? Because it, 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 it the, there's not really been a group who've won it. There's not been a, an over twenty five who's won it. So I mean, was it difficult being an over twenty five in the X Factor? Extremely, um, extremely difficult. Because a lot of the a lot of the other contestants and a lot of the other acts were all about the same age as well, weren't they? I know I know there, there were stories you were saying about um, you know the parties that were going on in the house. You didn't really get involved in you know stuff like onesies parties and all that. Because yeah, no, I mean yeah, I mean and, and you know tea parties. And stuff. And, and you know, uh, face painting parties and stuff like that. I mean, I didn't, not that I didn't get, I mean, I did get involved with, you know, and it's, it's, it's filled with an extra factor. But the thing is, though, I mean, I'm a little bit older than the rest of them, and you know, I was, I, mean, I had a lot more to prove, you know, and, and you know, I. You know, I really wanted to, you know, do my best and get my head down and do myself proud and Liverpool proud and the people that were, you know, supporting me proud and, you know, I didn't want to let them down by, you know, by, by you know, and it's not about getting involved, I just want to learn my songs and, you know, I still got involved with them and I was in rehearsals with them all the time, you know, we were, you know, we had downtime and, you know, we are in the green room and, we still got involved with each other, um, but unfortunately, you know, I just I didn't want to, you know, you know, I wanted parties or I didn't want to be involved in anything like that only because, you know, I wanted to, you know, get my head down and, and especially as the weeks were getting on and, you know, the critique that I was having, it was never my voice, um, you know, it was always about like, you know, the song or the, uh, the, the you know, the, the what I'm wearing or, or, or the staging of it. Um, so it got more difficult, and the more the more that it went on, and the more I was getting lost in, in myself, sort of thing, because I was thinking, what do we need to do, you know, to to try and make it better? Um, so I think it was a lot of a lot of that as well. I mean, I mean, I didn't just finish the show, and you know, it just went out my head, but it went over my head what the judges were saying. I mean, it, you know, it affects you a lot. Yeah. Um, right. I got got a couple of messages. I've quickly got to go through for you. Um, we've got Kaz Harper who's listening in North Yorkshire. She said, "Can you say Kaz. say a big hello to you?" Uh, also, uh, your cousin Lee as well has been in touch. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. said, uh, "Say a big hello to you." Also, uh, and we've also got uh, Chris, Sam, and Thomas as well who've, who've been who've been in touch and said, yeah. "Can you say yeah. a big hello to, oh, to Chris yeah. as well?" Oh. So I pass those messages on before brilliant. we carry on. So yeah. Um, oh, thanks. Well, go- can I just can I just say if anyone wants to? You know, keep in contact with me, anyone out there that, that you know that have voted for me, and you know want to keep in contact. My website um, is ChristopherMalonyMusic.com, um, and I'm on Twitter as well, so that's the way to get in contact with me. And just hope everyone that's listening can you know go out there and you know see if you can get any tickets for the X Factor tour because it's going to be absolutely amazing. And I'd love to see everyone you know that that supports me along the way there. You know, and I make time for them when I'm at the tour. Yeah, I was just about to say we're going to come on to the tour very quickly, but just before we do, um, what was it like working with Gary Barlow? Yeah, absolutely brilliant. You know, it was fantastic. I mean, he's an absolutely um, an amazing guy. Um, he wasn't, you know, at the end, he, he, you know, he's not. He wasn't just a mentor at the end. You know, he turned into a, like a proper friend. You know, we've been together for well, it's been a year. It's been a year in February, so it'll be a year. That was my first audition. Um, so it's been been a year that we've been together, like as he, he like sort of mentoring me, yeah. um, and he's he's brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant, and you know I've got a lot of time for him. He's got a lot of time for me, and he's just he's just you know what it says on the tin. He's brilliant. Yeah, do you think he'll be there to support you right the way through your your music career, and obviously when you release your album? Well, and I hope and... so. I mean, I mean, as I say, he helped you know Marcus Collins with his first album, so you know, um, you know, um, I'm hoping that you know that that um, that he'll be helping me as well. 
you know, when, it, when, that, when that comes around, there's a lot of interest, and you know, and it's all in negotiations at the moment with uh, with my management and stuff. There's a there's a lot of interest going on, but I can't say too much about that at the minute. So you can't give us a release date for the album now? Uh, no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth a try, wasn't it? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try, nice try, Danny. Try and get an ex- <laughs> try and get a bit of an exclusive from you. Uh, right. So as you say, obviously, um, London's calling on the uh, the X Factor tour or, or you know rehearsals. Um, what can I mean? What can people expect if they haven't bought any tickets yet for the tour? What's, what sort of uh, thing can they expect? You know, I mean, honestly, I mean, uh, this is an, it's an arena and stadium tour. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I mean, I've seen some of the staging of it, and you know the amount of dancers and the amount of work that's gone into it. It's going to be unreal. It's going to be probably the, the the best you know X Factor tour that X Factor have ever done. It's going to be phenomenal. So if anyone hasn't got a ticket, they need to go out and buy one today. Yeah, and of course it comes to Liverpool, your hometown. That's going to be a special gig for you, that, isn't it? Oh, I can't wait. I really can't wait. 6th of February, 6th of February, and then, um, you know, I'll be there. I'll hopefully, you know, come out and meet as many people like that I can. You know, so it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be special. Yeah. It's what dreams are, it's going to be brilliant. I can't wait. Yeah, because again, obviously there was all that rumours that, you know, you weren't going to be taking part in at all because you threw a paddy and all that. Again, which no, was nonsense, just, wasn't it? But Just, just, just as I say, rumour mill, rumour mill again, yeah. So yeah, as you say, this the sixth of February uh, at the Liverpool Echo Arena. It's going to be a magical night. Um, if you haven't got tickets yet, make sure you do get them. Uh, anything else on the horizon for Christopher Maloney? Any TV work? Any? Um, but, yeah, I mean there is at the moment. I mean there's something next week, but unfortunately I can't say anything because it's not confirmed yet. But what I'll do is just tell all your listeners that I will tweet it, um, and it's going to be it's going to be a surprise. I can't wait. It's going to be a, it's going to be a nice surprise for everyone. That's missed me on the, that's missed me off the X Factor on the television. I'll be I'll be on the television next week, but I can't tell you which show or when that's going to be just yet. You're not going to join Ryland then in the Big Brother house. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, no, I mean, one, one, one of reality TV shows enough for me for now, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chris, it's been an absolute pleasure. Wish you all oh, the best for the, um, for the for the tour and obviously the new album and everything. And when it comes out, we'll have to work, we'll have to get you back on and, and promote your album and single and everything as well. Thanks, so. very, thanks very, very much. No problem at all. There we go. Uh, Christopher Maloney uh, and talking about the X Factor and everything else.